So the Bracky's Game Jam is back again for 2021. This is too easy for a seasoned game developer like me, so on top of making this indie game in just 7 days, I thought it would be fun, as any sane person would, to outsource every single decision made in this devlog to a random dartboard throw. Three, two, one. There is one slight flaw to my otherwise genius plan. I don't have a dartboard. Okay, look, I, I made a dartboard. <laughs> Why, well, yes, I did spend two days of the seven day time limit just making this dartboard to help me with the real game. If you make a new UI image and give it a circular sprite, we can change its image type to filled and use the fill method radial 360. This gives us access to a slider that we can use to create our sections of the dartboard. Throw in a name, colour, an angle for each, and voila, lay dartboard. I do however find that dartboards aren't much fun without a dart to throw at them. Get it? Because without the dart, the dartboard is just a board. And it would probably get pretty bored all by itself. <laughs> We start with the dart and making it choose a random position on the dartboard to land on. Using the x and y axis we can generate a random coordinate inside the bounding square, then using the equation for a circle check to see if it's on the dartboard. If it's not, we simply repeat until it is. Okay, quick side note. A few days ago I was browsing Reddit and I came across something called a Monte Carlo simulation. I was amazed to find out you can estimate pi just by using how many points are generated inside and outside of a circle. And wouldn't you know it, I just made a system that generates points in and outside of a circle. Hmm. If you take the number in the circle, divide that by the total number and multiply by 4, you get 3. Shout out to all the engineers watching. You actually do get a really good estimation for pi. What in the black magic skull duckery is this? While our Cartesian coordinate system will work, I'd much rather remove the possibility of generating a point outside the board completely. Introducing Polar Coordinates. Instead of along the corridor and up the stairs, it's more like rotation in radians around the pole and how far away you are from it. Easy, right? You're probably used to the equation for a circle being x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared equals r squared. In polar coordinates, the equation of a circle is just r equals the size of the radius you want. That's it! All we need to do now is generate a point within a radius unit of the centre and can now completely just randomise the angle because it doesn't matter. Slap together some animations and voila! Dartboard! I don't know about you but this is looking kind of So to add extra juice I'll start spinning the board too. It doesn't really make the result any more random but I don't know about you, it, it just feels a lot more random to me, you know? And that is how you spend two days on something that should take two hours. Let's start the real jam now, shall we? We can ask our new and totally unbiased friend, for example, who is the best game dev ever, and it will randomly select blank dev. This cut there, this is clearly broken. A Unity game that's 2D, set in a volcano where you play as a blob that is being chased. The chase part is easy. The volcano has erupted and you have to run away from it, because the last time I checked, they are pretty deadly. I really do not recommend getting yourself thrown into one. The blob part, however, that has me a bit stuck. So you play as a hyper-detailed blob man controlled by holding down a button to fly up or letting go to fall down. The catch is I'm going to leave friction on. This way you get stuck to surfaces as you touch them, slowing you down. If this isn't enough, we could also detect if we touch a wall through code and physically stick the blob to the wall for X number of seconds. Let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. First, we need to code a prototype. How? Well, I have no idea, but we can start with... When the fly key is pressed, in this case W, we tell everything listening that the up key has been held. When the blob is created, it subscribes itself to this event and tells Unity to add a flying force to it. This is really tricky to control though, because gravity is far too strong. If we scale it down, you'll see this isn't much better. Now, a blobby is just the right amount of controllable, but gravity takes so long to bring it back, I'm afraid the heat death of the universe would happen sooner. What if we combine the improved position of slower movement due to reduced gravity and the snappiness of higher gravity? That'll do the trick. Let's set the gravity back to normal and manually restrict the maximum speed in each direction. It can use some tweaking, but this feels much better, freeing us up to work on... Would it really be a Bracky's Jam Jam if we didn't rip off the legend himself? He takes our scene from this to this. Hey, what are all these orange coins though? Well, let's touch one and find out. Oh, oh my god, this is so chaotic! 
So these coins have four points. We can calculate them by getting its size and offsetting it in each direction. We can check that works using gizmos. When the coin is collected, we create four new blobs, put them in each position, and imply an impulse to them to shoot them off in that direction. It's a trade-off the player must make between less control but higher risk of extinction, or lots of chaos and you can afford to let a few more die along the way. Now what good is it having all these clones if none of them can be brutally murdered? Lava turned out to be a lava trouble. First I tried using a regular square and just moving that over time. The only problem is it looked like, well this. That's not good enough lava material for me. It needs to wave. So I throw open shader graph to make a kick-ass wave shader, only to remember I do not know how to use this. Then when hope was all but lost, I remembered one of Unity's newer features as taught to me by Brachius, I don't know if you've heard of him, introducing sprite shapes. Sprite shapes allow you to make a shape out of any given shape. Luckily for me, lava and waves are indeed a shape that exists, so by throwing together some waves and sine waving its position over time, we get this. Not perfect, but it's definitely much better than before. This would look a million times better though if the waves were offset from each other. On the left you will see every other node moving while the others remain still, and on the right you will see every node moving just in opposite directions. The code to do this is surprisingly simple, maybe I'll leave it for one of you to figure out in the comments. Although don't bother really, because they ended up looking the exact same. So, tough decision here guys, which one should we go for? Okay, okay great god, glad that one's cleared up, I didn't want to make the wrong call there. Currently it is way too easy to outrun the lava. In fact, it's far too easy for the player to run off the top of the screen too. Making a camera that can follow all these blobs around is going to be very challenging, so for now let's just try slowing the player down. Yep, that'll do it. I see you met my friend the Sawblade. Don't touch him, his death virus is quite contagious. Here's a fun one. These paddles are dual purpose. They can help you, and hurt you. Paddles also have a more deadly variant, spiked paddles. These paddles, wait for it, they have spikes on them. And boom, killing machine. Or in some cases, the ultimate troll machine. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, if this happens to you, you can just press R to restart, so you don't have to wait patiently for the lava to catch up with you. Sure, I could fix this bug, but I'd rather not, so let's just move on. All this spinning is making me pretty dizzy, so let's just add one more final obstacle that has nothing to do with spinning, please. A big boy piston pusher thing seems good to me. These components can be used to build a giant single level where you aim to get as high as you can. To trick people into actually thinking they want to play this game again, there is a simple high score system that keeps track of how high you have gotten. You'll see a dash line representing the highest point you have reached, and if you manage to reach the complete top of the volcano, there will be a secret prize waiting for you up there. I'm sure you'll love it. Making a camera that can follow all these blobs around is going to be very challenging, very challenging, very challenging. Well, I knew this day was coming eventually, but as a wise man once said, the only thing we have to fear is for itself and giant overcomplicated camera systems in Game Jam games. Do we simply camera follow the top blob as it progresses upwards? Do I try to average the position of all the blobs and track that, or dynamically zoom the camera to fit all the blobs on the screen at once, or divide the big level into zones? I have no idea. That's four ideas, I don't know which one to pick. If only I had some way of making multiple choice questions without having to actually figure out which one was the best. Shame that doesn't exist. Well okay then, camera zones. We have a finished game. A game that definitely works in the built version and can definitely run at more than 2fps in the browser and not at all on different Macs. I give up, I'm never making a single game ever again until the next time I make another game in two days. Until then, here's something to keep you all occupied.